The last vehicle that we will talk about is the Charitable Lead Trust. A non-grantor Charitable Lead Trust is a gift plan defined by federal tax law that allows a donor to transfer assets to family members at reduced tax cost while making a generous gift to charity. As a non-grantor Lead Trust donor, the donor irrevocably transfers assets, usually cash or securities, to a trustee of their choice. For example, their charity or a bank or trust department. During the lead trust term, the trustee invests the trust assets. Each year, the trustee pays a fixed percentage to the charity. These payments are used for the charitable purpose the donor designated. So this is, in some regards, the exact reverse of a charitable remainder trust. With a charitable remainder trust, the donor receives the income. At the end of that trust term, the charitable remainder goes to charity. With a charitable lead trust, the income from the charitable lead trust goes to the charity. The actual assets of the charitable lead trust revert back to a family member. This is typically known as a wealth transfer type of arrangement where the donor is trying to transfer assets to heirs and in doing so is willing to set the assets aside for a specific period of time and let the charity receive the income off those assets and ultimately pass the assets on and on to their heirs. The lead trust term may be for a specific number of years. 10 to 20 years is common. Payments are made out of the trust income or trust principal if the trust income is not adequate. If the trust income exceeds the charitable payment in a given year, the trust pays income tax on the excess. When the lead trust term ends, the trust distributes all of its accumulated assets to the family member or other beneficiary named by the donor. Again, this is a wealth transfer strategy. The benefits of a charitable lead trust, the donor qualifies for a federal gift tax deduction, and so they're trying to get assets to their heirs and they don't want to pay gift tax on it. The charity will receive annual payments from the trust for the term of years. The beneficiary of the trust, for example, family members, will receive all of the trust assets, including appreciation, when the trust terminates. Any asset growth that occurs within the trust will be distributed to the trust beneficiary free of gift or estate tax. The donor's gift will benefit from the expert asset management, just like a charitable remainder trust or a charitable remainder annuity trust or unit trust. The charitable lead trust will also benefit from the expert asset management of the charity. And this plan giving vehicle makes an immediate impact on the charity because the charity is receiving the income from the charitable lead trust for that term of years. So the goal for the donor is the donor is looking for an opportunity to transfer wealth to the heirs in a tax efficient way and also make an immediate impact on a charity. These typically are larger gifts. Uh, there, you know, some charities will have rules on what the minimum amount is. Um, I think a general rule is somewhere uh, $500,000 and above. In, in, in most circumstances, you're probably going to see that these are multi-million dollar gifts. And so because of that, because they could be very large in size, if you're receiving the payout on that, a 5% payout rate on that, um, you know, it can be substantial income to the charity every year. And so the impact can be significant on the charity. And the donor really is doing this, one, because they want to make an immediate impact, but Two, uh, you know, they have estate tax issues. Uh, they have heirs uh, that they want to transfer the assets to, uh, and they're looking for the most tax efficient way to do it. How, how the donor would, would accomplish it is like a charitable remainder trust, the donor would create a charitable lead trust and then transfer the assets into the trust. So another vehicle. The charitable lead trust is... Uh, rare. Uh, you won't see this used often. There are some charities that use it, uh, you know, 
fairly frequently at smaller amounts. Uh, but for the most part, um, you know, you will, you know, large charities will have one or two of these. Uh, they're not uh, a significant part of uh, a plan giving office or a plan giving programs um, asset base or, or gift base. But the, it is a tool to be used and in the right situations it's very, very effective. This concludes our discussion about the various plan giving vehicles and how they may be best applied in situations involving particular donors, the goals they seek to achieve. We discussed the during this session an overview of the plan giving vehicles, uh, understanding of the plan giving vehicles and how they may apply in particular situations, and how the appropriate vehicle is identified for a donor. These plan giving vehicles allow a donor to make a larger impact than they likely ever envisioned. The donor is able to not only accomplish their philanthropic goals, but also meet their family and financial goals. These plan gaming vehicles allow our donor to make a larger impact than they likely ever envisioned. The donor is able to not only accomplish their philanthropic goals, but also meet their family and financial goals. The plan gaming tools that we have discussed are essential to allowing donors to accomplish all of their goals. And because of that, they're able to make larger gifts than they ever thought that they could. Because we're modeling the gift structure based on what their goals and interests are, not just their philanthropic goals, but also their family and their financial goals. And because of that, we're able to increase the impact that they can make and be a more donor-centered organization. Now that you're equipped with the knowledge of the plan giving vehicles, let's have a discussion. I'd like to, each of you to answer two questions. What plan giving vehicle would benefit you most and why? Same question, but only for your parents or grandparents. What plan giving vehicle would benefit your parents or grandparents most and why? And then the second question, what are the factors that go into choosing the right plan giving vehicle?